So let's look at critical chain project management. Uh, critical chain has been evolved from um, Eli Goldratt's book, The Goal and the Theory of Constraints. And there was a book published in novel format, uh, rather like The Goal, called Critical Chain in 1997. And basically what Eli Goldratt is saying is that the, the constraint to your project isn't the time, it isn't the critical path, it's the resources that you have. Here are five concepts of critical chain project management, and we'll be looking at each of these in detail in the subsequent slides. So the first concept is that we're not going to have any dates or milestones. We're not going to publish any dates or milestones because they're going to change. So we're not, just not going to ask for them. The second concept suggests that people always pad their estimates. So when somebody gives me an estimate, I'm always going to cut it in two. Somebody says it's going to take two weeks, I'm going to plan it at a week. And don't worry, we'll do something about the time that's been lost. Third concept of critical chain is that when people finish a task early, they don't report it. If you finish a task late, it's going to have a knock-on effect on the following tasks. But if you finish a task early, you probably don't report it. You keep quiet until it's time to deliver. Multitasking is our fourth concept. Critical chain suggests that multitasking creates losers, whereas if we don't do multitasking, uh, we'll have a look at some examples, we're going to create winners. And the fifth theory of critical chain project management is that we're going to use buffers. That extra time that we've pinched away from people when we cut their durations in two, we're going to put some of it in a buffer such that tasks can expand into that buffer. So our first concept, we're not going to ask for dates because people don't meet them, because they're always changing, because when we don't meet a date, we're going to have to replan it or the plan looks out of date. If we don't put any dates in our plan, then it's never going to look out of date. Critical change suggests that the dates are fictitious anyway because people protect their work. They never deliver early. They put extra time in their in their task estimates to arrive at the dates, so the dates are not accurate. So critical chain is never going to ask for dates or durations. The second concept is suggesting that people are going to reduce their durations by 50%. Now this is a fundamental uh, characteristic of critical chain project management and requires people to understand that when they say it's going to take them two weeks, only a week is going to appear on the plan. Essentially, we're suggesting that people are never honest when they give us an estimate. I mean, this is my problem with critical chain project management. I've been trying to build up a, a culture of open and honest culture where when somebody says it's going to take me two weeks, um, it is going to take them two weeks. And if it takes them just over two weeks, that's OK, as long as we can learn from it for the future. If somebody says it's going to take two weeks and critical chain says you've got a week, then that's going to upset that person if they were honest in the first place, that it really is two weeks. They're, they're going to uh, complain and say it can't be done and I don't believe your plans. This is the effect it will have. I'm using Microsoft Project to demonstrate uh, this, although to do real critical chain project management, you need specialist software. I've got a simple project plan here. I've got uh, a few work packages, work package one, two, and three, and when they're each complete, we can assemble this item. Uh, I've done this the traditional way by allocating the resources to the tasks, and the computer has decided that the first work, pa the first work package is critical. It's shown it as red, but we can clearly see that there's going to be a resource problem here because Alex is doing task one, task four and task seven on the same day. I've only got one Alex. Uh, the thing to note on this uh, project plan is that the first task, task one, takes two days. Uh, we'll just have a look at that on subsequent slides. The total project is saying 12 days, but we know this can't be achieved because of resource issues. 
Now, I asked Microsoft Project to balance this, to level the resources, and this is what Microsoft Project did. It actually split some of the tasks. So Alex is going to work on task one, first of all, uh, and then he's going to uh, work on task four. Um, Joe is going to start on task two, but then he's going to stop because he's then going to jump down to task five. Splitting tasks is inefficient. We'll see that in a few slides' time. But this is the, the balanced, the, the smoothed resource profile that Microsoft Project provides me. And it says for this plan, the project is 18 days. Now, I am not a computer. I can add some intelligence. Now, I have then gone to rebalance this and said, look, it makes more sense for um, us to do tasks one, two, and three first. And when task one's finished, we'll do task four. And when task two's finished, we'll do task five. So this is the 18-day plan that I've created out of Microsoft Project. Uh, this is just an illustration of saying, use your intelligence on Microsoft Project. Don't assume it is clever just because it's a computer. Here is our final traditional project management plan with task one that's taking two days' time. I've had to do this manually. So let's apply critical chain to this example. We're going to take each task and cut it in half by 50%. But the 50% we take off, we're going to add to something called a feeding buffer. So now, instead of task one taking two days, it's taking one day. But I'm putting that day, along with the buffer from task two and task three, into a feeding buffer at the end of task one. Here's what the plan looks like before I balance the resources. And when I manually balance the resources, I get an answer of 14 and a half days. Let's just stop and consider what we've done in this plan. We've reduced the durations for every task by a half, and we've put that time into a feeding buffer. This has resulted in a three and a half day saving in the project plan. Our third concept of critical chain is suggesting that early tasks are rarely reported. Now, of course, if we're cutting our durations by 50%, something that used to take two weeks, we're now saying is one week. If it finishes early, it's probably going to get reported. Now, in traditional project management, no incentive to declare early completion. Uh, and as an example, students, do you ever submit your coursework early? No benefit of early completion is therefore passed on to the next task. However, if you're late, any delay is passed on to the next task. And that could be critical, it might not be critical, but it is delaying the next task. So, in this example, tasks A, B and C each take two weeks. If A, B and C are late, D is late. If A, B, and C finish early and it's not reported, D finishes on time. Critical chain says we're actually going to plan A, B, and C at one week, and we're going to have a one-week buffer. Now, if A, B, and C finish early, there's a good chance we can start task D early. If A, B, and C are longer than a week, they can start to use up the buffer time. The fourth principle, critical chain project management, is that multitasking only creates losers. If we concentrate on one job at a time, we are more efficient. And we're going to have a look at two examples, one at tasks within a project and one at multi-project level. So as any normal worker has got more than one thing to do, let's say we're working on tasks A, B, and C at the same time, and the total time is illustrated. But the real time to finish the tasks is increased because I'm less efficient when I'm multitasking. I have to keep switching between the tasks, putting the paperwork away, picking up from where I left off. It is inefficient. So the real time to finish tasks A, B, and C is longer. Whereas if I did task A until I finished it, and then task B until I finished it, and task C until I finished it, I can actually finish them a lot quicker. This applies at project level as well. If an organization is trying to deliver 
three projects, A, B and C again, there will be inefficiencies. As project A grinds to a halt because of a lack of resources, and then I need to move resources from project B to project A, then I need to communicate with those resources about what they're doing, it's inefficient. Project B is now slowing down because it's lost some resources. However, if I delivered project A, and then project B, and then project C, critical chain says I'm losing that inefficiency time, so I can actually achieve those three projects in a shorter period. Let's use an example uh, of this, of uh, a ship arriving for unloading at the docks. And each owner wants priority on the ships, and we'll talk about that when we see the finished example. Each ship takes five man days to unload, and you've got five men, or five cranes, or five container movers. I could put one man on each ship, because I've got five days, everybody wants priority, so they see somebody working on their ship, and I can achieve all my unloading with five men in five days. However, if I put all my five men on ship A, on the first ship, it's gonna be finished after day one. I have delighted that owner of that ship because I've unloaded his ship four days early. Then everybody can move to ship two and unload that, and I complete that three days ahead of my previous schedule. The problem, of course, with this method is I have to convince the owner of ship three that he is gonna be third in priority, uh, but still, by doing that, he gets his ship unloaded two days early. So in this instance, I've assigned all my resources to one ship. I'm not multitasking, I'm single tasking. Nobody has lost out, and four of the customers are delighted because they've received an early completion. So critical chain project management says no multitasking. The fifth concept of critical chain is to use feeding buffers. I've highlighted these feeding buffers that we inserted into this Microsoft project plan. And the way you use these buffers is as you start to use the time in them, as you will, because remember, instead of a two week duration, we've assigned a one week duration to the task and put a one week into the feeding buffer. If you use the first, say, 33% of the feeding buffer, you can report that as green and you're just monitoring the situation. As you start to use up towards 66% of your buffer, you're now planning to take some corrective action. Once you've used more than 66% of the buffer, you're going to take action. You're in the red zone. So we report on the consumption of the buffers. Now this ties back to our first concept that we're not going to report progress or dates or durations. We're going to report on how much of the feeding buffer we've used. So to summarize some of the advantages of critical chain project management, it claims big successes. When I go onto the internet and I look for real life examples of critical chain project management, I can't find them. When I go to talks about critical chain project management, the speakers say, you will not find anything published because this is giving my organization so much benefit, it is a competitive secret. Well, let's just think about that. Nobody's publishing their successes. Now, I don't now know whether there's no successes or whether really this is a competitive advantage. Disadvantages, you need specialist software. I have mocked up those samples in Microsoft Project, but specialist software is required to produce a critical chain project plan. My biggest issue with critical chain is it shows a mistrust of estimates. And somehow the organization has to buy in to the fact that when somebody says it takes three weeks, I'm only gonna plan seven and a half days, half of that time. The rest of the time is going in a buffer. In effect, critical chain says everybody pads their estimates. Everybody lies to the project manager. I've got a real problem with that. So the whole organization has to buy in to the use of critical chain project management, to the fact that these durations will be cut in half, and to the fact that reports will be on the consumption of the project buffers. 
That's critical chain project management, and the next little video clip will look at agile project management.